Now, I'd like to welcome our speaker, Sarah Coley, and thank her for joining us today. But before turning it over to Sarah, I'd like to give you a brief introduction. Sarah Coley was born and raised in Winnipeg, Manitoba. She had obtained her degree in nutritional science from the University of Manitoba and completed her dietetic internship in Manitoba. Sarah is extremely passionate about diabetes. She has worked full-time in diabetes for 13 years, volunteers for various diabetes events, and is the chair of the professional section for the Manitoba chapter. For more information on Sarah, please read the speaker bio section, and that is located to the left of your screen. So, without further ado, I present to you Sarah Coley. Thanks, Sarah. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Coley. Thanks for joining in today. Um, I'm presenting from lovely, sunny Winnipeg here. Um, so I'm very excited to talk to you today about carb counting. Um, it's one of those, oh, no, do you know how to carb count? Um, it is a hot topic always in diabetes, and um, I'm going to try and make it a little bit easier for you to do today. I have no um, conflicts of interest to declare. Okay, so where are we going with this presentation? Um, step number one is to be able to identify which foods affect your blood sugar. So which foods have carbohydrates? We're going to look at our carb counting skills. So we're going to start with the basics, which is more eyeballing or guesstimation. We're going to look a little bit more advanced into labels. We're going to look at measuring foods and using food scales. And we're going to talk about different resources that are available. All right, so first off, what are carbohydrates? I always say carbohydrates or carbs are a fancy word for foods that raise our blood sugar. Carbohydrates break down into sugar, which is glucose, and our brain must use glucose or sugar for our energy. Why should we count carbs? So carbohydrates have the most impact on blood sugar levels. If we count carbohydrates, we can possibly have less glucose excursion, so less highs and less lows. We'll feel better when our blood sugars are more stable. We have more flexibility in meals and snacks, which can kind of say there's no off-limit foods. We can include all foods. And overall, we'll have better blood sugars and a better A1C. All right, so let's take a couple minutes here. Um, if we want to look at this slide, if we start at the top left, there is a salad there. Um, I want you to kind of take a couple minutes and just write down um, if these foods contain carbohydrate or not. So number one would be salad, and I'll just give you a hint that that's just vegetables and um, a vinegar dressing, no croutons. The second one is chili. If we go up, number three would be um, black coffee. Four is bananas. And if we go to the bottom row now, we've got a happy looking corn on the cob. We've got a dancing milk, and that would be cow's milk. And then this next one is actually oil. So we could just say olive oil for the purpose of this um, example. If we go down, that's bacon and eggs. Up slightly is avocado. And then we've got some little mice carrying their block of cheese. So a couple minutes there, if you just want to jot down, just test your, your knowledge for identifying carbohydrate. Okay, so let's review. So the first one is salad. So salad we mostly count as negligible. Um, most of the um, available carbohydrate is close to 0 to 5 grams per cup, so we usually don't count salad. If we go to the next picture, that's chili. So chili usually has some beans and tomato sauce that will have carbohydrate. 
And if we look at coffee, black coffee, so this is actually kind of a trick question. I'm sorry I had to throw this in here. So black coffee is counted as zero carb. However, um, some of you could notice that in the morning if you're not eating and you have black coffee, sometimes black coffee can make people's sugars go up. And it has nothing to do with the carb. It's just a lot of caffeine for some people can cause that adrenaline response. So it causes that fight or flight um, syndrome, and your body can release stored sugar. So this is just a side note. But we would count coffee as black coffee as zero, and we wouldn't take any insulin for extra coffee, but just so you know that this in some people can make the sugars go up. Um, if we go to the next um, picture, we've got bananas. Bananas are um, a great source of carbohydrate. And then the bottom, we've got um, a happy-looking cob on the corn. I think that's so cute. Um, so yes, corn on the cob is carbohydrate, and our cow's milk is also carbohydrate. Um, some of the unsweetened almond milks will be zero, so it's just good to um, know which type of milk you're you're consuming. Oil will be no carb. Bacon and eggs will be no carb as long as you're not using ketchup. Um, avocado will actually be no carb. So I have um, a lot of people ask about avocado. So very healthy, um, but a good source of energy. It is a higher in fat. And then we've got a block of cheese. So cheese um, will not affect blood sugars either. Okay, let's move on to our next slide. How do we count carbs? Well, first off, we looked at being able to identify carbs. So if you have a meal in front of you, you've got to be able to discern what has carbohydrate and what doesn't. The next step is going to be um, knowing what fits into a carb serving. So we count carbs in either serving sizes or carb choices or grams of carbs. So if we look at one carb serving or one carb choice, that is equivalent to 15 grams of carbohydrate, which if you want to visualize that, I'm a very visual person, that's three sugar cubes or three teaspoons of sugar. Now the next step would be eyeballing. So this is at the very basic level of carb counting. And this is um, good enough if you're just on oral agents, no agents, or just like a background insulin. Um, eyeballing your carbohydrate so that you're at about a consistent amount every day for breakfast, at a consistent amount every day for lunch, and a consistent amount every day at supper will make those blood sugars a little more stable. We're going to talk a little bit more about eyeballing in a few minutes. And we're going to look slightly at more advanced type skills. So looking at labels, measuring, using food scales, and then again talking about the carb counting resources. So what are some advantages of eyeballing? Well, eyeballing obviously takes less time and it's less calculations. You kind of look at the meal and you can be able to identify what is carb and what isn't. Um, like I said, if you're not on um, a mealtime insulin, you're just on oral agents or metformin or nothing or a background insulin, um, then this is ideal for you. The disadvantages are um, if you're not quite sure and one meal has a lot of carb, the sugars will be higher after that meal. Um, or if you have a meal and you thought it had carbs and it doesn't, then your sugars can be a little bit lower. Um, eyeballing or guesstimation can be very inaccurate. Um, we know that roughly research shows that we are overestimating the foods we eat by about 20 to 25 percent. Um, and it's not ideal if you're on a bolus or mealtime insulin. So if you're on a mealtime insulin, we would like you to match up um, the carbohydrate a little bit better. But this is where we would start. So how do we do that? So Step one, I always say um, we can use the plate method um, for estimation of carb counting. 
So if we look at our plate, which I think most of us are familiar with, it's great, it's awesome, it's pretty straightforward. So we've got a plate, half of the plate is vegetables, and these are our non-sweet vegetables. Um, so the sweet vegetables that I would kind of count would be your carrots, peas, turnips, squash, and parsnips. Oh, and beets as well. So these sweeter vegetables at one cup, I would, I would count them as 15 grams of carbs or one carb choice. But these vegetables that we're talking about as half a plate would be more like your salad, your broccoli, your cauliflower, these sorts of vegetables. So if we look at our plate, half the plate is vegetables. That would be very negligible in carb, or we would say zero for the basics of the basic. If we look to the next category, bottom right, we've got a quarter plate of meat and alternatives. So if this is fish, um, chicken, pork, beef, eggs, we do not count any of those foods unless there is a breading, a batter, if there's ketchup, if there's barbecue sauce. Now, some of the proteins, such as peanut butter, um, lentils, we would count those. So those ones are not counted as zero. So typically, um, per tablespoon of peanut butter, you're looking at about five grams of carbohydrate, um, and lentils depending on which one, but usually about one cup we count as 15 or a serving. So if we are at a half a plate of, let's say, salad and broccoli, a quarter plate is our chicken breast or our pork chop, so far we would count it as zero. The next quarter plate is starch. So let's say we've got a potato there or um, corn there or pasta. Roughly a quarter of the plate is about two servings of most starches. So that would be potato, a medium-sized potato, a full corn on the cob, or one cup of corn, one cup of pasta. Um, but when we look at rice, about a cup of rice or a quarter of the plate is three servings or 45 grams of carbs. So if we're just eating that plate, a quarter plate of, um, let's say, rice, a quarter plate of chicken and a half a plate of vegetables, that would be 45 grams of carbohydrate roughly or three servings. If this was half a plate of vegetables, a quarter plate of protein and um, a baked potato, that would be roughly 30 grams. Now if we add one cup of milk, cow's milk, so that would be we could use 0%, 1%, 2% or whole milk, these all have the same amount of carbohydrate. It's the fat that's different in the um, milk. If we add a small piece of fruit, such as an apple, that would be another serving or 15 grams of carbs. So this total meal um, with the plate, milk, and fruit with a baked potato, let's say as an example, would be an example of 60 grams of carbohydrate or four servings which is very balanced, it's a healthy amount of carbohydrate. If we had the quarter plate of rice, you're looking probably closer to 75. All right, let's use, um, we're gonna go on to estimating carbohydrates using our hands, which is another great tool. You have your hands everywhere you go, so it's actually great at guesstimation. So if we look at uh, the size of your fist, so if everyone wants to make a fist in front of me right now, take a look at that fist. Roughly, the size of a lady's fist is going to run you about 30 grams of carbs or two servings for starch. So again, about the size of a potato, that big is going to be about 30 grams. A cup of corn, a cup of pasta, same thing. Now a cup or a fist of rice will run you about three servings, which is 45 grams of carbs. The size of a fruit, so if you make a little fist there and are looking, the size of an apple that big will be about 15 grams of carbs or one serving. If you make two hands in front of you, that's the portion of vegetables 
and we say that's negligible or close to zero. The palm of your hand and the thickness of your little finger, so let's say the size of a chicken breast, we would count as zero. The fat, so that you're kind of your tip of your thumb, we would count as zero. And a serving of milk, um, I always say about the size of your fist, which is roughly about a cup or eight ounces, which is 250 milliliters. All right, so let's just move on for a second here. Now that we've discussed basic carb counting and guesstimation using either your hands or a plate or both, let's move on to a little bit more advanced. Now this is ideal if you're on a mealtime insulin and you want to match the mealtime insulin to the amount of carbohydrate you're eating. Um, this is very important for people that want variability in their meals, flexibility in their meals and meal times, and they want less peaks and valleys with their blood sugars. Now, not everybody needs to know advanced carb counting, but for the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to go through it. All right, so if we look at a little bit beyond the basics, um, very cleverly named, um, we've got this, which is available, obviously, through Diabetes Canada. So if we go through beyond the basics, um, I don't know if you guys have all um, had a chance to look at this great resource, but I'll explain it um, briefly here. So we've got the legend in the top left corner. So if we look at, we've got the full shaded cup, which is one cup, but then we've got the half cup, we've got the quarter cup. Next um, kind of column, we've got the tablespoon, teaspoon, items to be measured after cooking. Then we've got foods by weight, which is one ounce. And then if you notice, we've got the little green marked boxes, which are found on the left-hand side of the sheet versus the kind of yellowy orange found on the right. So the left, the little green ticks would be the lower glycemic index, higher fiber, less processed, healthier choices. To the right, the choose less often would be the more um, processed, lower fiber, higher glycemic index choices. So these are not to be avoided entirely, but to be consumed here and there. Okay, now how this um, whole system works is on the left hand of this entire paper are your carbohydrate containing foods. On the right hand side of the paper, these are your non-carbohydrate foods, but we're going to highlight a few on that side. If we go back to the carbohydrate containing foods, each box is considered one serving or one carb choice, which is 15 grams of available carb for absorption. So if we look at um, a few things, so we could look at the second column, there's corn. So that symbol means half a cup of corn would be an example of 15 grams of carbohydrate or one carb choice. If we look on the choose less often side, we've got 10 french fries as an example of one carb choice or 15 grams of carbs. Now this doesn't mean you're stuck with eating half a cup of corn or 10 fries. Obviously if you want one cup of corn, that would be two servings or 30 grams of carbs. If you want 30 fries, then that would be three servings or 45 grams of carbs. The next category would be fruits. So they give a bunch of different array of fruits here. Now those blank boxes are for foods that you or your patients want to put um, commonly eaten foods in those little boxes. So let's say I eat um, a certain type of bread and I want to make my little note in the grain and starch on how much my bread is. Maybe it's 20 grams or um, 25 grams. Or, so that's just little um, boxes for commonly eaten foods. The next category is milk and alternatives. So we've got our chocolate milk, our, our cow's milk, and our yogurts. 
We've got the blank spots again for anything that you'd like to add. And then at the bottom, we've got other choices. So this is puddings, popcorns, jellies, jams, honeys, all those sorts of choices. Now, if we go to the other side of the sheet, we've got the vegetables. So most vegetables we count as negligible. However, each baby carrot, one baby carrot, is one gram of carbohydrate. So definitely when you're eating more at one sitting, that can add up. So if we're eating 15 baby carrots, that would be roughly 15 grams of carbs, which is about a cup. So I always say carrots, peas, turnips, squash, and beets, more than a cup, I'd kind of caution and to count that as a serving. Our next category is protein or meat and alternatives. So most proteins will not affect our blood sugar. So cheese, cottage cheese, eggs, um, different types of fish, pork, chicken, beef, um, wild meats, um, unless there's a breading or a batter or you're having it with like ketchup or barbecue sauce. Um, tofu, no. But we would um, caution you with um, legumes or lentils. So at a cup, we would count them as one carbohydrate or 15 grams of carbs. And peanut butter, we usually don't count, but I, I caution people because um, I do have some people that will, including myself, um, eat um, peanut butter with a spoon. So that can add up. It's about five grams or a teaspoon of sugar per tablespoon. So depending on how much peanut butter you like, that can add up, but typically we would not count that. As well as any of the fats, we typically don't count. So avocado, bacon, butters, um, you know, mayo, margarine, nuts and seeds, oil, salad dressings. Um, and again, just a caution with like nuts and seeds at a serving size. Um, they won't affect sugar. I mean, there's some fat and some protein in there. But in larger portions, so like a handful or a cup, that will add up. So again, this is just moving through the different serving sizes. So starches, what is 15 grams of carbs? What is that? So this is just some examples there. I do like often, I do add the corn on the cob to the Beyond the Basics because I find... Um, I eat a lot of corn on the cob, and I know a lot of my patients eat corn on the cob. So a full corn on the cob would be two servings, which would be 30 grams of carbohydrate. And then just some different fruits. So it's interesting to note, um, I always think this is a cool trick. So if you make a little fist, this is going to be hard to explain, but if you look at the length of your knuckles, so your index finger all the way down to your pinky, those four knuckles, the length of that in a banana is 15 grams of carbohydrate or one carb choice. So most bananas that I buy would be about two of those, which would be two servings or 30 grams of carbs, sometimes maybe even more. So that's a cool trick that I picked up along the way. The other interesting trick is, so you see at the bottom of this slide, we've got 15 small grapes. So 15 small grapes is 15 grams of carbs. One grape is one gram of carb. One cherry is one gram of carb. And one baby carrot is one gram. So I always thought that was kind of interesting. And lastly, we've talked about milk already, so just looking at the different 15-gram um, carb servings. There are so many choices and variety nowadays. That's why it's think, I think it's great for patients to know how to read labels, which we're going to get into right away. All right, labels. All right, so labels in Canada... Um, are slightly different than labels in the States, but for this presentation, we're going to talk about labels in Canada. Now, um, 
I mean, most of us, I think, look at labels, and I say if you're not an avid label reader, when you go to the grocery store, only look at three new labels. If you're going to look at every label for everything you buy, you are going to go nuts. So just a couple labels each time. Um, a lot of times you can just even start looking in your pantry at home and just looking at stuff because uh, this can be very overwhelming. So first off, when you look at a label, so I don't know if anyone has a label kicking around beside them, but when you look at a label, you want to look at the serving size they're talking about and compare it to how much you're eating. So, you know, if you are eating... Um, Oh, I don't know, as an example, let's say crackers, and the serving size is for four crackers. Are you eating four crackers? Are you eating two crackers? Or are you eating 14 crackers? So that's obviously important. Label reading is easy to do um, if there's a label. So often foods that are fresh and healthy don't have labels. So if you think of going to the grocery store and you're buying a bunch of bananas and you're buying some apples and you're buying some fresh chicken, a lot of stuff doesn't have labels. So this is not great um, if you're relying solely on labels for carb counting. Um, another little funny thing is cereals. So all cereals... Um, are portioned in uh, a 28 gram weight. So this is not carbohydrate. This is 28 grams of actual weight. So it could be different. So if you're having Cheerios, it's one and a quarter cup serving. If you're having Rice Krispies, it could be one and a half cup. If you're having mini wheats, it could be half a cup. So this is kind of confusing when they put the weight there. So just make sure you know what it's talking about. Sometimes if I was looking at the other day, I was um, I had a small bag of, I don't really want to say, but I had a small bag of chips, and the serving size was 28 grams, but the bag was 56 grams. So you assume that you're having the bag, which is a serving, but actually you ha would have to multiply by two in that scenario. So sometimes you gotta you got to kind of watch. Okay, so let's just label reading. So I've got a label up here. Um, so if we look at step one, we'd be looking at the um, serving size, which is one bar. Okay, so if you opened up this package, and I know some granola bars, they have two bars in one package, so that would just be a caution. But if you open up the package, it's one bar, it weighs 80 grams, the like the outside package said 80 grams, you eat the whole thing, then this is what you'd be getting. So I'm just going to quickly explain here. So we've got the total grams of carbohydrate, which are 20, and that's in a bold print. Underneath, we've got dietary fiber which is three, we've got sugar, which is one, and we've got sugar alcohol, which is 12. Now, of that 20 grams total, underneath indented, we've got three of the 20 is fiber, one of the 20 is sugar, and 12 of the 20 is sugar alcohol. Now, sugar alcohol is not a commonly found thing on foods, but definitely I purposely picked this item to talk about it. Now, the leftover carbohydrate, which would be 15, 16, 4, would be 4 grams, would be starch. So in Canada, starch does not have to be on a food label, but as we know, sugar and starch both contribute to your blood sugar levels. So when you're looking at this label, you look at the total and you subtract the fiber. So that would be 17 grams of carb but you would also minus the sugar alcohol from this example as well. So it's just like fiber, you subtract it, it does not count. So 20 minus 3 would be 17. Because this product has sugar alcohol, which has to be labeled, you'd minus the other 12. So 15, so that would leave you with a net of 4. So hopefully everyone follows that okay. All right, so let's move on. Oh, so obviously, um, 
foods come in different shapes and sizes? If they don't have a food label, how much carb do they have? Well, <laughs> this is where the food scale and all your measuring cups comes into play. So you can get extremely accurate if you're using a food scale and you're using measuring tools such as measuring cups, tablespoons, teaspoons, etc. Um, you can learn a ton from doing this, even one meal a week or a couple meals a week. Um, the cons are it's extremely time consuming and it's a pain, it's very tedious, but honestly it does get a lot easier. And this is not fun for complicated recipes. All right, so I mean with food scales, you can't really bring one with you. So if you were going out for dinner and there was no um, information on the carbohydrate content of things, if you're going out to a friend's for dinner or um, you have a work event, you're not really going to pull out your food scale or your measuring cups and figure stuff out. Now, if you're using a food scale, now for some of the cheaper scales, so I bought one on Amazon for 10 bucks. It was free shipping. So I bought one of the cheaper ones. Then you would need a food factor handout, which I'll kind of show you. The more expensive scales, so you're looking at about 60 bucks on Amazon, um, you would put kind of your baked potato on it and you would kind of put in the code for baked potato and it would tell you how many grams of carbs you were eating. Now, scale I bought, it doesn't do that. So I would put on my baked potato and um, you would get five grams of carbs per ounce. So let's say if I had a five ounce baked potato, that would be 25 grams of carb. What about recipes? Well, there are apps that do this, which I'll touch on at the end, but if you wanted to do one by hand, um, I will run through how to do this with you. So you would do this um, ingredient by ingredient. So I picked one of my favorites, banana bread. Um, so just a typical banana bread recipe uh, makes eight servings or eight slices from the loaf. So if we've got half a cup of butter, I want you guys all to jot down how many carbohydrates you think that has. We've got one cup of white sugar. Do you want to write down how many carbs you think that is? We've got four medium bananas, a half a cup of all-purpose flour. You've got a teaspoon of baking soda, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla. So if you just want to add up that quickly, so add up your butter, your sugar, your bananas, all of that together, and how much is the total loaf? And then per serving, you would go divide by eight. So let's see what we got. Okay, so let's see what we all got. So half a cup of butter was zero. A cup of white sugar would be 200 grams of carbs with no fiber. The four medium bananas would be a net carb of 104. The flour is 45. So if we add up all that together, that would be 349 grams of carbs for the loaf. So per serving, if we cut it into eight pieces, that would be almost 45 grams of carbs or three servings. Um, carb counting um, resources. So a lot of restaurants have their nutrition information available. So you can look at it ahead of time on their website. Um, some restaurants and fast food places have it on site. Or you can use, there are several awesome apps and websites. So I use MyFitnessPal often. It does have the recipe analyzer on there for you. Spark People is good, MyNet Diary. So there are tons of different apps that you can track all the information as you go. So all, looking at the carbs and make sure you're subtracting the fiber from that. Now, I challenge all of you to try um, honestly tracking what you're eating for a day, for a meal, for a week. Um, so actually weighing or measuring 
every single food you eat and inputting that into an app or keeping track of it by hand. And you're going to be shocked, honestly, 